HairClassBarrelDespairs.com. I hope you're having a wonderful morning. And right in front of you, I have a Triumph 350 cylinder barrel. So this is off of a T90. Uh, it's in great shape, still sporting the original paint, which is the silver paint here, and it's still on standard. Uh, I want this barrel to be more experimental for my race bike. Um, if I have to take apart my motor, um, I have different pieces to work with and experiment with. So basically what I want to do is I want to be able to use the Thruxton style tap blocks. These are much larger in diameter than the typical tap block that you find in a Triumph cylinder barrel. Uh, running this tab block will allow you to run a very large radius, which would be a three inch. So I want to be able to get this cylinder barrel mounted on the plate and be able to run these tab blocks. So in the next clips, I'll do a little bit brainstorming, thinking out loud, and I'll give you guys a little insight of what I'm going to do. So off camera, I went ahead and ground the cylinder head gasket. I did that on the surface grinder. And so that way the head gasket surface is flat to the table and it's also parallel to the surface here, which would be where your base gasket is. So we do know that the tap it block angle should be at three and, a, three and a half degrees. Now I've already had this table set up from last week when I did some work on another cylinder barrel and it was three and a half degrees. So basically what I'm doing here is I have my indicator, the head is not, or excuse me, the barrel is not bolted, it's at three and a half, and we're just gonna drop the indicator all the way down the bore and see if it moves. Now there is a tolerance to everything but considering how that is right there, that is pretty damn close. So theoretically speaking, I could bolt the barrel down, I could pick up the center, and then I can bore the hole. Now, I've decided to bore the hole, or I think it's better to bore the hole in this orientation rather than the barrel flipped over. And in the next clip, I'll tell you why. All right, so the reason why I want to bore the cylinder barrel with the base gasket facing up is because there's simply more clearance here. If I were to do it the other way around, there's a tighter clearance here, and my boring bar would have to be so far extended that I'd probably get chatter. So in this area here, I'm going to assume that I should probably have a short boring bar that'll be very rigid and I would have, and I would have less chatter. And I also have more control. I might be able to get a, a, a bore gauge in this area here rather than all the way down there. So that's number one. Um, once I do bore this hole, the other concern and something that I have to think about is the center line of this hole here. So like I said earlier, this is 516 by 26. There is a dimension which I do have from the bottom of this shoulder to the center of the hole. This dimension stays the same on all the triumphs. So we have to make sure when we bore it here that the flange for the base here is gonna be the same center line at this hole. Second operation after we do the boring, actually there's gonna be three operations. So we're gonna start with the bottom here, we'll bore the hole out. Then we'll have to put this on the angle plate more than likely, maybe some one, two, three blocks. And then we'll have to bore out this center hole. That's quarter 26. This is 51626. The easy part is, and it's not very critical, is that this hole has to be 516, but there's not gonna be any threat. So all the bolt has to do is slide through the hole. So we'll pick up the center, that way everything stays in line. Obviously, we still have to square the tap of block once the tap of block is inside the cylinder head. So uh, 516, it could be a little bit larger because once we square it up, we should be able to move the tap of block to make sure everything is in line with the, uh, the camshaft lobes. Um, after that, we're gonna do the third operation. I'll flip the barrel over and I'll give you more insight on that. Barrel is flipped over and as we start to bore this diameter here, it might be close to about the same of this diameter there. And that would be comparing the OD of this tap and block. Now, as I said earlier, the bottom of this shoulder and the center line of this hole is the same on all Triumph Tappa blocks. They did not change that dimension despite the diameter of the hole. So that makes it a lot easier. So with that being said, if that dimension is the same, which it is, that means this flange here, that shoulder, that has to stay and retain at that spot. I cannot lower that because if I lower that, then that changes the center line of this hole. So I must not touch that shoulder at all. Obviously, again, there's gonna be a tolerance to it. Uh, what I probably will do is I might have to, I, I don't know it, but once I bore that hole out, I'll have to flip the barrel over in this orientation because this flange diameter is also larger. So if I have to do a third operation, So I went ahead, finished boring the hole. Now I got to turn around and do this one. But I think before I do this one here, I'm going to finish the outside boring there. Um, so the concern here is uh, the lay down of the pushrod tube. Um, considering how tight it is here, I might have to run the boring bar down all the way 
uh, to be able to make sure that the push rod tube does not foul here. Um, if it does foul here, then it's not going to lay over at the three and a half degrees. So um, anyway, so we got that taken care of. Then we still have to do the boring here, which was the third operation I talked about. Uh, so we'll have to basically just open up this area here. So we'll center up here. We'll run the indicator down. It's not as critical because it's going to be seated at the bottom. I talked about setting up my barrel on the angle plate to bore that quarter inch 26 thread hole. Actually, considering how much time it's going to be, it's not really necessary. I'm just going to use my 516 drill bit and then we're going to drill out the hole. Considering that it's already bored through, uh, the drill bit naturally will follow that existing hole, but we'll do our best to keep it straight. Uh, we just really need the bolt to get inside. But if it was threaded like it originally is, uh, then obviously we'd have to take more caution and more setup. Uh, but for something like this, we're just gonna bore it. All right, so I went ahead and bored the hole. So now we got a 516 hole. So observing this a little bit more, I talked about removing material up here to make sure that the pushrod tubes lay down. So that's still valid, but I just want to focus on where is it going to foul? And it looks like it's definitely going to foul right here. So the only concern about up here is as you start opening this up, you're getting very close to the stud holes where the threads are. Um, so I want to focus strictly on that area. And because down low here, there's more clearance. Let me see if I flip this around. So if you can get it below that spot, it shouldn't be an issue. So it's almost like somewhere here and down low, we should open up. And uh, once we can open that up to at least get it started, to we can get a tool in place to drive it in, uh, then we can put a push rod tube and uh, see if it will lay over. All right, so I have the coax set up. Basically what we're doing here is finding the center. Um, I would prefer to use my other indicator that I have, but considering uh, it fouls up, this one's got a lot more clearance so we can get that thing rotating. So let's see if we can do it at the same time. I'm trying to get that needle here. I typically actually set it up with the coax when the machine is off and in neutral, and then I fine tune it with the uh, handles, but since I got it going on here, might as well keep going. So theoretically speaking, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we're just setting the flange to where it's gonna stop. What's more important is making sure that that base is parallel to the table and square to the hole that we've already bored. So that's more important than anything. So anyways, off camera, I'll get this sorted up and then we'll get the boring bar back on. All right, so the barrel is nice and tight. Let's drop the needle down to make sure we're at zero. Now we're out of the bore, we'll go back up. So we're good. So it's still three and a half degrees. It's accurate, it's good. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll pick up the center of that hole and then we'll start doing the machine work on the top. All right, so this is what I have so far. So you can clearly see it's cutting more over here. Not that it's not in the center of the hole, it's just the way that the casting is. So instead of removing more material, as you can see, we're getting close. Um, not concerning, considering um, you know it is cast iron and the thread pitch is very, very fine. I believe it's 26. So I'm actually gonna stop and I'm still touching here and I'm still touching here. So what I'll do is uh, I'll get my porting uh, carbide bit and I will literally just remove material in this area there and then we'll blend it in. Um, it's not gonna be seen because there's gonna be a push rod tube. But anyways, uh, that's what I'm running into. So on both sides in this area. And then so now that this is open, uh, there should be no issues with getting my tool in there and actually uh, laying down the push rod tube. So let's go ahead and mark this up with some uh, red dye and uh, we'll open the clearances up. All right, we got some red dye. Let's put it in here and scratch it up so we can see where it's touching. All right, see a little spot right there, a spot right there. All right, so we're milling the top portion there. So right at the bottom, that's where we're gonna have to open it up on both sides. So we'll keep running it down. Right, so remove material there and there. Let's see if it'll fit. All right, so now we got clearance issues down below. And that, what I'll do is not use the boring bar. I'll still use the uh, carbide cutter that I have here and just focus on those areas. So we'll put some dye there, see where it's touching, and then we'll open it up. So 
I switch back to my Micro 100 boring bar right here. And basically what I'm gonna do is on the inside here, I'm gonna start opening up this entire area to a little bit more or a larger diameter than the shoulder here. It doesn't have to be perfect and there's really nothing that we're trying to hit as far as a dimension. Just make sure that it sits all the way down. Uh, then what we're gonna do is since this does fall in place, I turn it down we're gonna visually make sure that it's in the center. So this is a 516 hole, and obviously this hole is not perfectly round, and it's a little bit larger than the nominal size, which is fine. But we need to make sure that when this tap block is inside the bore, that it is seated. So we don't, we don't want it to sit too far down, we don't want it to sit too high up. It's gotta be in the right spot. So what we'll do is use this boring bar here, since it is uh, has a smaller diameter than the other one that I'll using, and we'll just focus on this area, and we don't have to drag the boring bar up and down. We're just gonna keep the boring bar down here, open up the diameter, and then we'll go from there. starting to look a little bit more uniform here. We're gonna check it in place. Nice. So right now we're gonna check to make sure the center line is in the center of that hole and it's not. So basically what we need to do is we need to get the boring bar back in place, take the block out, and we're going to face the shoulder so we can drop the depth a little bit further down. And we're just gonna basically eyeball it. Once it's in the center of that hole, it's gonna be fine. All right, so here's an update almost there so we have a little bit more material material to remove and we'll take it off here and you can visually see so still a little bit of a chamfer there so i'm assuming we will remove that but i'm just going to take it a little bit at a time if you can see very closely we haven't really altered anything because that shoulder right there is where the uh, the original shoulder would have been so that makes sense because it's a little bit further down, which means that it will drop the tap of lock down. So um, the reason why the shoulder is kind of chamfered is because the diameter was smaller and now the diameter is larger. We've kind of removed that shoulder. So we will keep going down and then basically we'll just test fit it to make sure that it's centered in the middle of the hole. But we could put some uh, dye here and uh, we can just visually see. Let's go ahead and thread the bolt in. We're going to check a couple things. All right. So number one, we're gonna to check to make sure, can we square the lifters to the camshaft? That side to side movement, absolutely. No problem there. Uh, the other thing is up and down. A little bit of up and down movement, which is fine. We need that. We don't, if we were to put this in and it won't go up or down, we don't know if it's actually seated. So it's seated now because it's a press fit. So once it's pressed in, this little bit of movement or me tightening this is not gonna raise it. So everything's good. So as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much it. Um, maybe not tomorrow, I'm sorry, uh, the day after or maybe this weekend, I'll start working on the other side. So anyways, um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know. I'm also going to be uploading this entire series on YouTube. I had a few people reach out to me saying, hey, you should put it on YouTube. Um, so I will be putting it on YouTube. So anyways, I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys learned something. All right. Hopefully this might be the last check. We'll see. Eh. 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 It's close. I do have to keep in mind that this surface here is at an angle, so I need to get to that angle. So visually looking at it, I might go down a little tiny bit. Now, mind you, the bolt OD will probably, it will not probably, it will be smaller than this hole here. And this hole is larger than 5 sixteenths. So there is some wiggle room as far as if there's, you know, if it's too high or too low. But we obviously need to get it visually in the right spot. And this is my reference. This tap block is correct. And um, so my theory that the base or the, the bottom, or let me, excuse me, the top of the shoulder here is the same. That has not changed on all the tab blocks. So the bottom of the shoulder and the center line of that hole is the same. So I'm going to do a very light pass and then we'll check it again. And I think we should be done. You could still see a little chamfer there. All right, bingo, right in the center. So what I'm gonna do now is get the bolt and I will thread it into the tap block. And then that way we can actually check the movement. Uh, mind you, there is going to be an interference fit, or excuse me, a press fit. Uh, Tabit blocks, let's say cast iron or bronze in cast iron, uh, is about a thousandth press fit, sometimes thousand and a half.
but with cast and cast, you don't really need a whole lot, probably no more than a thou. Anyways, um, what we're going to do is put the bolt that is going to be used with this tappet block, and we're going to see if there's any up and down movement. If there is, that's fine. Basically, what we don't want is when we put the bolt in the tappet block, we don't want it to lift the tappet block. Uh, so we don't want to lift it out of the bore. Although there's going to be a lot of press, I doubt that would happen, but that's something that we need to check now. But other than that, everything's ready to go. We'll clean up the, uh, the inside there, the fins with the Dremel. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this one here. Almost forgot, we got to check the pushrod tube. So the pushrod tube has a lot of area to sit on, plenty of clearance. No problem. So it's sitting at the three and a half degree angle. So push rod tube complete. Tap the block in the bore complete. Now we will get the bolt and we'll thread it in and see how it works out. All right, so here's what it looks like from the other side. This is the three inch lifter. Pretty trick. Boom, there you go. So now I have to do the other side and then the time consuming part is I'm gonna to have to make the tappet blocks. Um, and I will make them out of cast iron as original. So yeah, I don't know of any other 350s that are running three inch radius lifters. I mean, there definitely is a benefit to running three inch lifters. Uh, the factory did it on their race bikes. Um, so you can clearly see it's a very broad, very wide um, and the, the actual shape is definitely different compared to a standard Triumph. So um, this is what it looks like from the other side. That's the uh, stock typical Triumph tap block hole. And then this one right here is the Thruxton style is what they call it. 